Hi, I'm Frank Almond, the mayor of Tucker, Georgia. Today's Monday, July the 13th, and there's been a lot of talk about masks lately, so I thought it might be helpful if I spoke for a few minutes about what we're doing in that regard and what we expect to be doing over the coming days and weeks. You might recall that we purchased and distributed 12,800 medical grade masks just a few weeks ago, and we've been encouraging and urging their use throughout this pandemic. You might also know that way back in March, I created an advisory panel to help me create and navigate our response to the coronavirus. We have lots of guidance from well-regarded state and federal resources, so I wanted a group of medical professionals and community leaders from Tucker to advise me about the particular impacts here and the needs we might have locally. They've been a great asset to me and all of us while we've been meeting the very difficult challenges presented by the pandemic. Most of what I'll say to you comes from them. All of it has been informed by them. So there's a lot of information out there about the effectiveness of masks in helping to reduce the spread of the virus. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of misinformation and even some disinformation. What's clear is that wearing one helps protect those around you from you, especially if you're carrying the virus and you're not aware of it. To some extent, depending on what sort of mask you're wearing, there's also protection for you, but there's even been some confusion about that. Here are some things we do know. If we all wore masks all the time when we were around other people, we would drastically reduce the number of cases and therefore the number of disabilities, deaths, hospitalizations, and all the rest. But the second thing we know is that with consistent use of a certain grade of masks, you can drastically reduce your own chances of becoming infected. And that point has gotten a little lost in the messaging about masks, but it's critically important. One other thing we can all agree on for certain is that more people wearing more masks more of the time is a clear goal for us as a city. The harder question is how to achieve that. And some people are beginning to urge a mandate of mask wearing as sort of the final answer, the biggest weapon we have in the fight to increase mask wearing. I disagree. There are some very good reasons not to have a mandate, and I want to share my thinking about that along with what I believe is a better course of action. There are three important initiatives we'll begin immediately in Tucker. One is we will ramp up our enforcement of the existing emergency orders issued by Governor Kemp, which include very specific directives about how various businesses, including nail salons and hair salons and restaurants and other establishments, are allowed to operate in Georgia. These directives are already a matter of law, and municipalities like Tucker are authorized to enforce them. In fact, Governor Kemp's latest order is something like 42 pages long and has specific sections for all sorts of businesses, as well as general categories for critical and non-critical infrastructure. Every organization is defined as one or the other, and the first thing I want you to know is that Tucker expects compliance from everyone all the time, and we will be ramping up investigations, inspections, and enforcement of those directives. Secondly, the city will very shortly acquire a large supply of the very highest quality protective masks for everyone in Tucker. They'll be widely available, they'll be free to everyone who wants or needs them, and these will be the sort of masks that protect you, regardless of whether others are seeking to protect you, and regardless of whether others are wearing masks at all. Third, we'll undertake a public information campaign to encourage mask use that will be like no other public information campaign you've seen in Tucker before. The idea will be to provide positive reasons for everyone to want to wear a mask, and so marginalize and reduce the influence of those who steadfastly refuse to on some philosophical grounds right now, so that even they too will be embarrassed to be seen without a mask, and in any event will make their resistance to the idea of no real consequence the rest of us. So why not use the law to make not wearing a mask a crime? Philosophically, the point is that you can't expect to make good public policy without considering the public's response to the policy you make. For reasons that are beyond me, mask wearing has become a very politicized, polarizing subject. We've already seen determined resistance by some to the very idea of wearing a mask, even without a law in place. There's a small segment who think it's their constitutional right to not wear a mask. And there's an argument to be made there. One day when it's adjudicated by a court, those people may be found to be dead right. Or they might just be found to be dead or disabled 
or having suffered the loss of a family member or other loved one. But let's grant for now that that right may exist. I would say to them that just because you can choose to do something harmful to yourself and others doesn't mean you should. For me, the biggest obstacle to a law mandating mask wearing is that it moves the decision and the argument of doing the right thing for yourself or for others to one that necessarily involves law enforcement and the court system. I simply don't think it's wise to put everyone on all sides of the argument in a position of calling the police on their neighbors and fellow citizens whenever they believe someone should be wearing a mask and they're not. I don't want 911 and our police officers answering calls to settle mask issues when they're already stretched to their limits dealing with traditional issues of crime under the most adverse circumstances we've seen in a long time. Second, such a law is certainly unenforceable. Since Governor Kemp's emergency order supersedes whatever we might do on the subject, everyone who doesn't want to wear a mask already knows that they can get out of whatever punishment we might threaten. And furthermore, they know the police are unlikely to be called anyway, that if they are, it'll likely not be a priority if they're answering another urgent call. And in any event, the perpetrator, the non-mask wearing perpetrator, will be gone before the police arrive. So how effective is a law like that relative to the cost the complexity, the division and strife it would cause to implement it. We don't even have full compliance with the governor's existing emergency orders, so why would we expect that anyone who's not already complying with mask guidance would suddenly change their behavior because we passed an ordinance? Third, as a matter of public policy, there's no clear measure for when and how we would undo the mandate. Just like I don't want to pit citizens against one another as to whether we should have a mandate. I don't want to pit each other again into endless arguments about when and under what circumstances we would end the mandate. Simply put, we are not going to make oversimplified decisions based on fear, and I am not going to sacrifice the city's credibility by issuing an order we have no intention or ability to enforce. We are going to formulate our response on an analysis of what the problem is and the most effective ways to move toward our goal of maximizing mask wearing. I've received lots of communication from people inside and outside of Tucker urging a mandate because other cities have done it. Let me point out a few things about that. There are 528 cities in the state of Georgia and about a half dozen others that are consolidated city and county governments. If you want to argue that because a dozen or so have issued a mandate, you also have to consider the fact that 520 others have decided not to. Further, even those who have mandated masks have such weak mandates that they end up being simply uh, symbolic or strong urging. One city in DeKalb has a mandate that says the first offense gets a warning and the second gets a fine of $25. Does anyone really think that's going to change behavior? or that it's worth the cost to the city of trying to enforce for a $25 fine. Another has a provision for our first warning, but then contains so many exceptions and exclusions, everyone will have a reason right at hand as to why they shouldn't have been required to be wearing a mask at that time anyway. And so probably no one will ever even reach the point of getting the warning, much less a citation. We may get to the point where a real mandate with real enforceability becomes necessary. But until we reach that point, if we can't or won't enforce it, I won't be issuing an emergency mandate. So with that, let me speak directly to the people who think it's a good idea to go out in public places without a mask. It's clear you don't care enough about your neighbors to take the simple steps to protect them from you transmitting the virus. But have you thought about the fact that if you get sick, an extended hospital stay could easily cost $100,000, and that even with good insurance, co-pays and deductibles could easily exceed $20,000. Do you have that money in the bank? Are you prepared to write a check for $20,000 in exchange for the privilege of asserting your right to not wear a mask, simple and plain, when you're out in public? If you're young and healthy and think you don't have anything to worry about, because if you get it, you'll recover fast, or you may have no symptoms at all. Are you aware there's a large and growing consensus that even in a case like that, long-term damage is being done to your lungs and your respiratory system, and that you could face heart attacks, strokes, other ailments 
that you could have avoided or delayed by simply taking the steps to protect yourself from the virus today. As we roll out our messaging in the next few days and weeks, you'll hear reasons like this and many others from friends and neighbors and community and business leaders as to all the good reasons why you should wear a mask and the few reasons why you wouldn't. I'm serious about stamping out the effects of this disease in Tucker, and I hope that as we enter our fifth month of dealing with it, you are too. We all want to spend time with parents and grandparents, children and grandchildren. We all want to get back to a normal work, school, family life. We all want to see baseball and football and basketball and soccer again. Wearing a mask is the single most important thing you can do to get us there. And if you're not yet convinced, or you can't get a proper mask for any reason, we're gonna help by making them available and by giving you all the good reasons you need to wear one according to the health guidance. Thanks for your attention to and your support for this important issue. Hope to see you soon on Main Street.